Hello, my name is Hakon and welcome back all you fabulous fighting fantasy aficionados. Uh, last time I was doing fighting fantasy roulette and this time I am starting a new book. This is Trial of Champions. Uh, I used to have this book back in the old good old 80s and um, didn't play it much. This is, I do know this is a sequel to uh, Death Trap Dungeon. I presume there are even more Death Traps in this one. I quite enjoyed Death Trap Dungeon actually when I played it earlier, uh, or last year I should say. And um, I'm quite looking forward to this, doing this one again. Uh, lots of people like it. I think I'll probably like it too. Um, there's going to be mapping, there's going to be monsters, there is going to be, there's going to be traps and death and gore galore so um yeah let's get started i suppose yeah i also got my um cup of tea just to ease the blow in case i die yeah which i will most likely okay let's get started uh, let's see start my camera yeah okay let's do my uh, traditional transition <laughs> And boom. Okay, here we are on my desk. I've got my supplies, as I like calling it. I've got my book, which is the most important thing. Um, I mean, without the book, there would be no adventure. In fact, without books, there would be no adventure. I like that one. Okay. Um, I've got my character sheet, which is nice and blank. I've got my map, which is nice and blank, soon to be an absolute mess, uh, traditionally. Um, I've got my pens, pencil, and my trusty old dice. And also I've got a cup of tea. Yum, yum, yum. Um, which is going to come in handy because this can get rather hairy, I imagine, because it is, well, it's a trial of champions. Um, let's get started with our stats. And this is going to be pretty standard uh, rules. So skill. Uh, let's see, skill. Ooh, character sheet in blue for a change. Let's, let's, let's do blue, maybe that will help. Stamina, um, 18, and luck, 9. So not particularly good stats. I'm quite sure that these are not good enough stats to, to win the game. But let's have a little quick look here and see, um, just to make sure there's nothing else. Standard rules, lock, lock in battle, skill, stamina, lock, adventure sheet, no provisions, no potions, no anything. Let's find out what happens and why. Background. It is another fiercely hot day. Oops, sorry, let's make sure my focus is correct. Okay. It is another fiercely hot day and the temperature and the sticky gloom below decks is unbearable. The air is thick with the acrid smell of sweating bodies. Nobody is allowed to speak, and the only noise to be heard above the monotonous creaking of the ship is the regular sharp crack of a whip and the agonised cry which follows it. Roll harder, you dogs! shouts the one-eyed overseer as he cracks the whip once again. Enjoy this pleasant voyage while you can, because you'll wish you were back on board after a day or two where you are going. Chained to a bench and straining hard at the long oar, which you pull with two other galley slaves, your mind drifts back to that unfortunate day one week ago when you were captured. I suppose if you've only done that for a week, that's not so bad, is it? I mean, come on, some people do it for a year. You had left Port Blacksand in a small, actually most people don't do it for much longer than a year because I think that the um, average life expectancy of a galley slave wasn't that much longer than a year, actually. Um, yeah. You had left Port Blacksand in a small boat to sail south down the coast to Oyster Bay. As ill luck would have it, a galley appeared on the horizon heading in your direction. It grew steadily closer, and it was not long before your boat was crushed under its bows, and you were forced to dive into the sea. There was nothing you could do except climb up a rope that was thrown down to you, as your boat had become no more than a few pieces of broken wood floating aimlessly on the sea. It was useless to struggle as a crew of twenty hardened cutthroats surrounded you. 
A gruff voice from behind them ordered them to part, and an ugly, scarred man appeared, grinning and spitting juice from chewing tobacco onto the deck. His teeth were chipped and blackened, and a foul stench wafted in the breeze from his unwashed clothes. Captain Bartella always delivers the goods. You'll make up for the one who died from the flogging yesterday. Saves me having to kidnap a landlubber. Must be my lucky day. But I wouldn't say it was yours. The captain let out a laugh which was like a long, wheezing exhalation, and then barked out an order to his mate. Take the rat below to meet the rest of the vermin. I don't know if that's how he talks, but oh, yeah. Since that cursed day, you have been chained to your oar, rowing to the point of collapse towards an unknown destination. A bit of a lightweight, if you're sort of really exhausted after just a week, it's supposed to be a hardy adventurer. You should take this in your stride. I mean, the kind of physique that an adventurer uh, able to survive these kinds of books would have um, a week as a galley slave would be like a, like a pleasure cruise. Anyway, suddenly you'll hear a shout of land ahoy and begin to wonder what evil awaits you. An hour later, you feel the ship bump against a jetty and there is much shouting until the ship is finally moored. You are dragged from the ship with the other slaves and see in the glaring sunlight that you are on a small island. A sombre looking castle sits on top of the island, and next to it there is a semi ruined amphitheater. A man wearing black chainmail armor hands Captain Bartella a bag of coins. Satisfied with his payment, the wheezing captain orders his men back to the ship and you watch them set sail. Do you really set sail? on a galley because technically it's a rowboat isn't it yeah i know it's sort of a fixed phrase but you don't technically set sail with a galley do you yeah, yeah. Uh, right um uh, sorry but sidetracked there and i can't find where i was yes it, you watch them set sail <clears throat> the man in black armor steps forward saying you are now the property of lord carnus it is your honour to die for his pleasure in the arena of death here on Blood Island. Only one of you will survive and he or she will represent Lord Carnus in Thang for the next Trial of Champions. Baron Sokumbit has modified his deadly labyrinth and is now offering 20,000 gold pieces to anybody who gets through it. Of course, Lord Carnus will keep the prize if you get through, but you will be spared your life. Now, see, this is actually worth fighting for because, uh, in a way, uh, because in the first Death Trap dungeon you were a foolhardy so-and-so that wanted to risk your life for the prize. In this one, you don't have a choice. I like that better. But on Sukhumvit's reputation suffered greatly last year when somebody succeeded in getting through the labyrinth. It was last year, wasn't it, that I got through? Yes. Yeah, 2020. Um, but he now boasts that nobody can survive his new dungeon. Lord Carnus would like one of you to make Sukumbit eat his words. You must understand that he hates his brother's fame. Ah, ooh, it's the brother. Now follow me. You are led up the hill to the castle where you are locked in a cell in the depths of the lower chambers. Sharing the dark cell with you are four others. A stout dwarf, a man-orc, a sinewy easterner and a bald, muscle-bound man. The mood is grim and few words are spoken as each of you ponders the impending combat. Forty-two slaves arrive by ship and only one will survive. The dubious reward is entry to a deadly dungeon. Now turn over. Mm. Exciting stuff. I quite like that intro actually that's quite it sort of sets up the atmosphere quite well it's got very good descriptions of of the captain and the stench and the wheezing and all that stuff it's quite it's quite good um even though you're a bit of a wuss to be complaining after just a week i think but yeah 
At dawn the following day, oh, paragraph one, must, must start mapping. Paragraph number one. Let's see down here. Okay. At dawn the following day, you are woken by the sound of heavy footsteps approaching down the corridor. A key turns in the lock of the cell door, and two guards wearing black chainmail enter, carrying trays of food. Eat well, says one of them, as you will need all your strength to survive the day. By the end of it, you may all be dead. The guard then turns to you and offers you some bread and a bowl of soup. If you wish to take the food, turn to 49. If you would rather try to overcome the guard and make an escape, turn to 292. I somehow don't think that is a good idea. It doesn't feel like a likely thing to be able to do. Um, seeing as this is the sequel to Death Trap Dungeon, I'll just do it logically now. This is a sequel to Death Trap Dungeon, which means you will go into the new Death Trap Dungeon. The only way you will get into the new Death Trap Dungeon is to not escape. If you escape, you would never get to the dungeon. The only way to get to the dungeon is to win whatever games you are set to do in order to become the sole survivor of the slaves, which means escape is impossible uh, without death. So, therefore, logically, um, I'm not going to try to escape or do any funny business. Um, I'm not going to do that. So, there we are. Um, 49, take food. So, food or um, escape. The soup is thick with chicken and vegetables and tastes delicious. You devour it greedily and mop up the last drops with the bread. You have not eaten well for a fortnight and now feel fit and ready for the coming ordeal. When you have all finished eating, you are led away to begin your first day in the arena of death. Turn to 22. Right, 22. <clears throat> oh, that's a long one. I think I'll do a little sip of tea before I start. Okay. You're in the middle of the procession of 42 slaves. 42? Why 42? Hmm. The meaning of life, the universe, and everything, perhaps which wends its way along various corridors until you reach the amphitheater. The sun is already beating down, making the stand in the arena uncomfortably hot to your bare feet. Seated high in the stand is a dark hooded figure, surrounded by guards. You watch him rise to his feet and lift his arms into the air, commanding silence. You know why you are here. Lord Karnas begins. It is my wish to be represented in the trial of champions. Some of you will die today, some tomorrow, and more the following day, until only one of you is left. Those about to die, I salute you. Lord Karnas sits down again and nods his head to signal the start of the proceedings. The slaves are split into seven groups of six, and you find yourself in a group accompanied by an elf, two northmen, a dwarf, and an ogre. Your group is chosen first, and you are told that the first event is a race to test strength and stamina. A crude sack containing several heavy rocks is strapped to your backs. You watch as burning coals are brought into the arena and poured over a section of the makeshift racetrack. The six of you are then lined up at the start, each carrying your burden, and are told to race round the track until one of you is lapped or collapses. Then you are off, and you all jostle for position on the way to jumping the first pile of burning coals. If you wish to set the pace, turn to 310. If you would rather stay at the back, turn to 107. Right. So it's a bit like uh, games day at school. Well, ish. Okay, um, 
So two options. Um, I'm just going to do them in front here now. It's better to have a well spaced out map usually. I'm presuming that the beginning here is going to be relatively linear. So I don't need a lot of space for the mapping, probably. Let's see, 310 or 107. Usually in a race like this, you don't want to be in front, do you? So I think I'd rather stay towards the rear because slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? So. And that's the kind of that's that's what I would do in real life as well. Um, I've got really long legs and I don't have much speed in them. So, uh, but I can keep a steady pace for a really long time, and I'm very good at finding the pace right away. If my character is anything like me, I would want to be at the back, and then I would actually overtake people as I get along. Um, okay, 107. I'm going to be at the back. One of the Northmen takes the lead, setting a fast pace. Round and round the arena you run, gritting your teeth harder each time you jump over the burning coals. After 20 minutes, nobody has been left behind, and the Northman increases his stride. Throw two dice, adding three to the total if you are flogged by the guards. Oh, is that what happens if you uh, try to escape? Um, if the total is the same as or less than your skill score, turn to 360. If the total is higher than your skill score, turn to 250. So we have a test of skill. Okay, so test, skill, um, 360 or 250. So 360 is success and 250 is fail. And I could easily fail this because my skill is only 9, and I rolled a 10, so that is a fail, 250. The weight of the rocks is steadily weakening you, and when you next jump the burning coals, you twist your ankle on landing and fall over into the sand. You watch the others race ahead as you pick yourself up. They are more than half a circuit ahead by the time you limp after them, trying to catch them up. Roll one die. If the number rolled is 1 to 5, then turn to 86. If the number rolled is 6, turn to 202. Ooh, okay. 1, D6. And so 1, 2, 5, and 6. Uh, let's see. Uh, paragraph 86 or 202. I'm guessing 6 is the bad one. I rolled a 4. Okay. So I'm going to 86 now. Or not. Maybe 6 is the good one. Your ankle is badly sprained, making it impossible to run. The Northman soon runs around the arena and passes you, so ending the race, while the other five runners up are led back to their cells. You are quickly put to death before the next race starts. And that is, is the end of uh, my first little session there. So the end. Um, I know this is quite a short video, but maybe I'll make it a short one. I've made so many long ones lately. So maybe I'll just do a short one now and start over again. Because I don't think my, my stats are particularly good either. And most likely starting over I will get better stats. You know what? So I'll, I'll call it the day. That was, <laughs> it's quite harsh this book, isn't it? Um, and I remember vaguely when I played this last time, I never got past the gladiatorial games. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll try, I'll try again next time. Okay. Um, right. So, um, well, thank you for watching. I'm sorry that was quite short, but uh, it's nice with a bit of variety of video length, isn't it? So um, if you enjoyed this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, join me on Patreon. And also um, please watch my next episode, of course, when I will be playing Trial of Champions again and see if I can be more of a champion than a chump uh like I was this time. Uh, champ or chump. That's a good title, isn't it? Champ or chump. Hmm. Champ or Champ. Um, okay, so um, I'll see you then. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.